My name is Mietta Lennes and I work for Finclarin and the Language Bank of Finland. And uh, I have been working uh, for the Language Bank since 2011. And I am uh, involved in many of the activities of the Language Bank, um, for example, um, the license issues, and I help researchers and teachers publish their materials. And I'm also responsible for the teaching. So we have uh, three different online courses every year. And one of them is the introduction to speech analysis, for which I have uh, now won the Clarin Teaching Award. And uh, the introduction to speech analysis was uh, the last course where we only had materials in Finnish. And uh, last year, I decided to uh, publish the materials in English as well to make them uh, more available uh, to the Clarin community and to other teachers. I had a lot of use of Clarin and the Clarin services. So uh, the entire course uh, is built around two tools, uh, the Prat tool that is available openly and uh, very well maintained. It's developed at the University of Amsterdam and also the tool called Elan that is uh, developed uh, by the Max Planck Institute in Nijmegen. And uh, these two tools are uh, very uh, uh, widely used and they are available uh, openly and they can be used on all uh, operating systems. And it's very important uh, for this kind of course to have uh, these sort of open tools so that I don't need to worry about uh, supporting uh, the students in their use. And um, also uh, a lot of speech resources are available via, via Clarin and it's very important to have them accessible every year, uh, for example, via persistent identifiers so that uh, the students can uh, access them and I can rely on these resources to be available in the uh, future years. Uh, the sort of problems I experienced uh, are related to creating sort of uh, modular courses that could be accessed also or used um, um, as parts in other courses so that uh, teachers could uh, take one bit of this course and embed it into another course and it is not easy to build um, a complete course in this way and uh, also uh, there are a lot of other things in an online course except for the uh, just the content the videos and the texts and the uh, documents and so on uh, there are also a lot of assignments quizzes and uh, the teachers will need the correct answers to the quizzes and uh, obviously I cannot publish the quizzes and the results and the answers openly. So uh, one thing where Clarin could really help is uh, to provide some sort of access management for teachers so that teachers could uh, maintain their own uh, quizzes and assignments and uh, exercises and make them available to other teachers um, uh, in the uh, way that they see fit. According to the FAIR principles, um, the learning materials and other resources uh, should be findable, accessible, interoperable, and uh, also reusable. And uh, I think uh, the learning resources can be findable in many different ways. Uh, I think the most important thing is that they have open metadata. So somebody maintains the metadata and makes it uh, uh, available publicly. And uh, there should be um, different uh, ways to provide this metadata so that people can locate uh, the teaching materials easily and the resources that they need. And also uh, they might want to uh, locate courses that are taking place. Uh, if the students want to take the courses, then they need to be able to locate uh, the courses as well. And uh, of course, we have the Digital Humanities course registry, for example, that can be used in order to find courses. Um, about accessibility, well, of course, uh, uh, we cannot make everything 
accessible to everyone, but um, it would be important to make uh, things as accessible to the target group of the course as possible. So, for example, it's important to try to support as many languages as we can. Since Clarin has a lot of uh, language uh, technological resources, it would be um, easier for Clarin than for many other infrastructures to, uh, for example, uh, provide translations of, of materials, I think. And um, uh, also uh, in terms of accessibility, um, uh, the uh, possible uh, restricted resources could also be made available uh, so that, um, for example, if there are copyrighted materials or uh, personal data, for example, uh, these uh, materials can be uh, made available only to the uh, students and teachers who are taking a particular course. And uh, they should, uh, they can, for example, log in in order to access the materials. And this could also be provided by Clarin. And uh, interoperability is also important. Uh, teaching and learning can take place uh, via many different platforms. And so it's important to provide uh, data and resources and content in formats that can be used in, in as many places as uh, possible. So, um, and uh, about reusability, uh, the most important question for teachers is, uh, what pieces of content uh, can they provide uh, so that they are uh, sort of independent of the other materials in a particular course? So uh, if a course can be modular in its structure so that uh, different portions of se or sections of the course are uh, well described and uh, sort of self-contained, um, and they have also metadata of their own, then it would be easier to um, reuse the materials in other resources as well. One of the main issues is that uh, the courses take a lot of time to develop and the teacher needs to maintain the course. And uh, for example, I do small changes in my courses every year and um, I correct errors. Uh, courses are never ready. The materials are never ready. And uh, uh, also science tends to progress and, uh, and the tools evolve and develop into something better. And uh, that is why it's very important to have a place for uh, teachers where they can actually uh, maintain their own stuff uh, without, uh, compromising uh, any of the uh, possibilities for sharing it. So it's very important to be uh, collaborative and uh, to uh, develop things together.